Oh, oh, I, I, I have a real, real, real fear of bunnies. And I feel like I live in the enchanted forest because they're all over the place. I see 10 a day. <laughs> they're all, I don't know why. In, in, in Southwest Florida, there's bunnies everywhere. And I don't know why the alligators don't eat them. I don't get it. But literally, uh, it, it's the enchanted forest. There's bunnies everywhere. I'm, I'm in hell every time I walk my dog. <laughs> because, and they're little asshole bunnies because they, <laughs> they will like, you'll see like four of them and they'll get behind a bush and they push one of them out. Because the dog is on a leash and they, it's like they make fun of the animals. No, you see them and you're like, you know, they're like making fun. They make one go out there and he's out there acting fearless because he know the dog can't do anything. And the dog's going crazy trying to get to the bunny and they're all laughing at us. I mean, no, it, it's, um, it, we have evil, 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 evil bunnies in Southwest Florida. Welcome back, friends, to the Pod Sound School. I'm Studio Steve, and today I'm happy to introduce an incredible guest to the show. Author, speaker, interviewer, conversationalist, actor, podcaster, Randall Kenneth Jones. I asked him to stop by the school to see if we could get a behind-the-scenes look into his process and learn some tips and tricks, not only about interviewing, but also about guest acquisition. Randy is the host and creator of the podcast, Jones.Show which is announced and guested by Susan C. Bennett, a.k.a. the original voice of Siri. He has a wonderfully natural, funny, and warm approach to his interview style and has interviewed many high-profile guests like authors, celebrities, business tycoons, journalists, and much more. Eh, but enough from me. Why don't I let him introduce himself? Uh, I go by Randall Kenneth Jones because Randy Jones is the original cowboy in the village people. And Randy Jones, the original Cowboy of the Village people, and I have the same lap, the same birthday. Oh, wow. Seriously. We're both Virgos. Uh, and I'm trying to get him to come on the show. So, yeah, in order, in order to distinguish myself, I use my full name. I started, I live in Naples, Florida. I started writing a newspaper column when I moved here um, in 2012 for four years. I wrote that, interviewed a lot of people about, you know, how to live a better life, basically, how to live better, work better. That became a book called Show Me, mm-hmm. which was a tip of the hat to Missouri, the state of Missouri, the Show Me state, which is where I came from. And that came out in 2016. And then I had so many people saying, wow, I would have loved to have heard these interviews because they seem fun. And people were commenting that my writing made them feel like they were in the room, which that felt great. <laughs> but, you know, podcasting gave me that opportunity because the whole process of meeting these people and talking to them and discovering aspects of their personality, discovering what they could teach me, it became a drug. Mm-hmm. It, it totally became a drug, something I had to do. And so starting last year, in, I started with the Nice Guys on Business podcast kind of as a correspondent. They really were so instrumental in shaping me as an interviewer. Mm. They're wildly popular. And then we kind of, we jokingly say, I'm the first spinoff. They were happy days and I'm Laverne and Shirley. (laughs) And I I had became my own show last September. Yeah. Okay. So to talk about Jones.show for a minute, I really, what I found really impressive was your interview style and the way that you, by the time you're into the episode, it sounds like you're just so friendly and you're just kind of really hanging out with your, with your friends there when you're interviewing. Maybe we could go a little bit behind the scenes with your interview process. It's a conversation. It's not an interview. It Hmm. truly is a conversation. And I'm not the only one in the podcast world that's trying to promote conversation, good old fashioned conversation. It is sincere. I talk to people I want to talk to. I get pitched Mm -hmm. all the time. If I don't feel that person is someone that's going to represent my brand or is somebody I have something to say? I mean, not that I'm saying talk to people you don't know. I'm all about talking to people who do things I have. I know nothing about. I love learning new things about people who do things I know nothing about, Mm -hmm. but I have to really make sure, does it inspire me at the thought of talking to this person? Does it inspire me to do the best work I can do? So I make sure I produce the best product. Hmm. It's really picking the right people and engaging in an actual conversation. Just talk, just Uh talk and listen. You know, I always go in with questions, but 
I also have to listen for that thread, something they're going to throw out, which is that thread I can pull mm -hmm. and I can discover something that I didn't expect to discover. That's what I want. Actually, I want to discover something new. And mm -hmm. if, in, in the instances where they tell me I helped them discover something about themselves, that's, that's wild. Yeah, that's crazy. That feels good. That feels really good. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think the other thing that's very notable about the Jones Dot Show is how fantastic it sounds from an audio standpoint. Uh, why does it sound so good? I, I spend a lot of time in my car. I will jump to hoops. I will jump to hoops to be face to face with the person I'm talking to. I met Sam Champion from ABC News. I drove to Miami. Now, that's only two hours, but that's still four hours of driving in a day. Mm -hmm. Thomas Youngblood from the metal group Camelot. Actually, my theme song, they allowed me to use one of their songs. It's Camelot with a K. They allowed me to use one of their songs as my theme song, which is great. He's three hours away. Mm. So when I interview him again, I'm going to be driving up to Tampa to do it. So I will jump through hoops to be face to face with that person because the interview is better. Cool. And then um, what about the editing process and the, and the post-production process? Because that sounds really very top of the line, really nicely, you know, mastered, nice and loud, really good quality audio. What goes into that? Total nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> Total nepotism. My son, Kevin Jones, is a graduate from Full Sail University outside Orlando. Extraordinary oh, okay. film school, which also is part of Film is Sound. Mm -hmm. And so Kevin actually is the producer and he will go through and i mean it's per, he that's what he does for a living he's a yeah, film okay. guy for a living so he's the producer of the show he knows what he's doing and mm -hmm. i think that's really really important i am all about quality of product and as a marketing person as a creative person that's really how i make my living as a marketing consultant a creative consultant and a writer that's important to me quality is very very important to me it's always been important to the clients that i've had maintaining the quality of the show is very important and when you're going to approach a high profile guest they or, or their representative are going to listen and if you don't sound good they're not ever going to say yes yeah uh-huh they're going to vet you and make sure that you are delivering the goods Mm hmm. I love that. I, I think that quality is just so important. You know, it's not just your podcast. It's you. It's your mm -hmm. brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing I wanted to touch on, I think that when people are getting into podcasting, whether it be business owners, entertainers, they might first think of making money from podcasting instead of the many other benefits. And I think that you touched on two other benefits, uh, which were personal and professional, and the personal being that drug that you mentioned. I truly do need it. And, and I think if you don't need it, maybe this isn't your thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And to your point, if, you, if you're doing it for money, then you're kind of a fool. Because, <laughs> I mean, not that you can't make money at it. You absolutely can, and people do. But there's a there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. for you to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Even if you never get to that point, the professional benefits are still so many. And not to mention, it's just such a wonderful art form. It's, it's tremendous. And, it, you know, the fact that it's people helping people. Mm -hmm. Most of these podcasts aspire to enter entertain or help. I mean, I, I'm around a whole lot of, obviously, I live in Florida. I'm mm -hmm. young in my community. I'm around a lot of people older than me. And I'm constantly taking their phones, showing them how to find podcasts, because mm -hmm. this is a generation raised on talk radio. Yeah. Uh -huh. they're, they're raised, the, these people are raised on talk radio. They don't even know what a podcast is. And I'm like going, wow, if I show them this little purple app on the iPhone, I might open up a brand new world because talk radio was a big deal to so including myself to so many of us growing up mm -hmm. there's any there's any number of topics and there's so many people creating content that can help you yeah and, and that's that i'm so proud i'm really proud of being part of that i say i'm proud of being one of the do-gooders yeah yeah and that's something that i think also is just resonates that's part of your message is this positivity but then also that you really um what was it that i heard you say was that you want to let people know that they're interesting you want to lift people up you know and uh i really like that as far as your message goes it's a opportunity to like you said help each other grow well know? and
and I and I stole that a little bit from Hoda Kotb, who has been incredibly good to me. When my book came out, she actually had me on her radio show. I mean, Hoda is a, a goddess. <laughs> but she said to me, "I would rather appear to be interested than interesting." Hmm. That's great. And I think that was extraordinarily good advice for me in doing what I do. And as far as my time being interviewed, uh, Joanne Lamarca Matheson, a producer of now Hoda and Jenna, said said great advice to me when I started doing interviews for the book and everything. She said, "Here's my best piece of advice: say just enough." Hmm. And those three words are with me all the time because I talk too much. I'm way too verbose, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm constantly have to edit myself. But hearing Joanne say to me, "Say just enough." It's just great advice that helps guide me in in as an as an interviewer and as a subject. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Now you know the one thing I really wanted to pick your brain about was guest acquisition, and you know how did you go about getting these guests? Is it persistence? Is it harassment? Uh, what? How do you go about that? Yeah, no, it, it takes time and it takes patience. You know, I'm going to I'm after uh, Chip and Joanna from. A fixer upper on HGTV.、Mm-hmm. I have an email for Chip. I have emailed him once a year now for three years. Hey Chip, yep. The reason I get people is because eventually I'm going to wear you down, and you're going to respond because I'm a nice guy. And I'm literally on year three.、Mm. And no, do not harass. Absolutely, do not harass. I use a site called ContactAnyCelebrity.com.、Mm. It's a membership site. Usually, that will have some sort of information. That will get me to a publicist, a manager, or somebody who can, even if it's not completely up to date, it, they, it usually starts a path, and I've been very successful with that path. I I believe we can all ask anyone to do our show. I think a thoughtful, concise email is everything.、Mm-hmm. Why would this celebrity want to talk to you on your topic?、Mm-hmm. Why would this be appealing to this person? Name dropping for me was everything because、mm-hmm. when I started doing interviews in 2012, I met a gentleman named Phil Buth, who was the president in charge of Good Morning America. He, within a month, I had met Regis Philbin, Jungle Jack Hanna. Then I met a gentleman that I was working with on a project, actually Jack McKinney, who was the former head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers, and I met Magic Johnson. And Bill Walton. So in two months, I had six name drops. I had six names of people who I could kind of parlay those names into more people because that gave me a lot of credibility.、Mm, okay. And so it's actually being and asking for referrals. Ginger Z referred me, and I don't know exactly what she did, but you know, magically here I am backstage at Dancing with the Stars live with Val Shmierkovsky, <laughs> her dance partner, when she was on the show. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Val doesn't do a whole lot of podcasts. <laughs> He does a lot of TV, not a whole lot of podcasts. Ginger believed enough in me and what I stood for that she obviously had a significant role in getting her friend Val to do my show. Hmm. Okay. It is patience, though. You cannot over push. My favorite story is I wanted Aaron Brockovich bad. I mean, who wouldn't want the real human being behind that movie? Uh huh.、Yeah. And she was speaking in Naples. 2014 ish, 2015, and I sent an email. I waited three weeks. I didn't do it every day. I waited three weeks. Sent another email. Didn't hear anything again. Went through her website. Submitted a request through her website. Didn't hear anything. Almost gave up. Said this is not meant to be. Well, my son Kevin happened to be here. And he's also a photographer, and he took a photo of me, kind of looking over a piece of paper, a big piece of paper with words on the paper, sort of a dorky look over it, looking down at the words. And the big words in the photo said, "Aaron Brockovich does not give up easily either." <laughs> one minute later, after I emailed that to her, one minute later, I heard from her. Wow! Because I did something that appealed to her sense of humor. And to who she is as a human being, because she doesn't give up,、mm-hmm. and she's my very good friend to this day. <laughs> wow, that's such a great story. I love that.、Um, and I, you know, I think that pretty much wraps it up. But before I let you go, what do you have coming up in the future that you're excited about? 
I have, let's see, I uh, the three that I'm excited about. Pat Benatar is going to do the show. Oh, We're trying cool. to schedule time for that. No, I really have a f- tremendous backstory with her. Um, yeah, that that backstory is also in your book too. Yeah, so. the backstory is in the book. Yep, yep, yep. It's fun. And and um, Lisa Guerrero from Inside Edition hmm. is coming up. Laura Benanti, Broadway star Laura Benanti, who is currently starring in My Fair Lady on Broadway, has confirmed we're trying to schedule that. So, but yeah, and uh, you know, just if they're interesting people and they've got a good story and I feel they're fun or interesting or have something to teach, Mm -hmm. I want them. (laughs) Yeah, and you know, if people out there, if they haven't tuned into your show yet, they're crazy, they really ought to. It's just so fun, so intimate, warm, and funny. Uh, where can we find your book? The, really, the best one is to go to the website, www.jones.show. Jones.show. It's called jones.show, but literally www.jones.show will give you a full listing of everything that's available. I mean, I'm on every podcast platform imaginable, mm-hmm. but that page is a way you can contact me. You can see everything. There is a link to the best place to buy the book. Mm-hmm. Um, it is right there at the top. So you can Mm -hmm. actually click right there and go to the best place, I think, to buy the book, the one I trust the most. So, (laughs) (laughs) but that would be the best way to reach me. So, okay, great. Well, with that, you know, I just want to thank you again so much for giving us your time and helping us out a little bit with some of the behind the scenes of Randall, Randall Kenneth Jones. And thank you. Well, thank No, truly a pleasure. I love what you guys are doing. I I love the format of the show. I love everything about it. And I'm, I'm, Truly very, very happy to be here. Uh, well, thank you, Randy, and really appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. The dog was good. 